Hey, Ronnie, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. How's it going? Good. How you doing, man? We're good. Thank you. How's quarantine life going? <laughs> <Not too bad. laughs> you guys are still breaking down film, right? Every day? Yeah, we do uh, one, one game a week plus uh, one quarter with a partner. Okay. And y'all do that online, I'm guessing? Yeah, we do it online. Uh, just a new, uh, I think a new format is coming out to where we pick a game coming up next week. So I don't know how that's going to work. Okay. How's it going down there? Same. It's going. It's going, man. <laughs> We're just doing what we can, you know. I feel you. Uh, yeah, yeah. I know uh, Martin said you were thinking about doing some virtual um, training camps in June and July, something like that. I'm trying to, trying to work on it right now just to have something, you know. Yeah, it sounds pretty cool. Yeah. This I've seen like other, being, nothing like that, so. Yeah, I've seen others do it. I've never seen people do it, um, like virtual camp, referee camps. I think it'll be pretty neat. Yeah, got to have something, you know, to continue the training, seeing that, you know, there's nobody refereeing right now, so. Right, and then no camps or nothing, you know. Camps. Physical. No. So. Yeah. You see it, Jose is up on this game. And then we got Mark jumping on tonight too, right? Yeah. I'm going to text him. I know he's, he's driving back from Indy. Okay. Has he, done Zoom, has he done Zoom meetings before? Uh, yes, he has. Yes. Okay. All right. Good job. And you've seen all the clips, right, Rodney? You've seen all of them? Yes. All right, cool. The first one's a good one, huh? Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good start, one. Yeah, start out with a, with a bang. It's a no eye contact with a, with a partner. Makes it a little bad. Yep. Nice haircut, Mark. All right, it hasn't come yet, Reggie. Does it look like I got one? I need that. Hell no, hell no, bro. <laughs> Mark, I can give you a haircut. Mine, yeah, I'll get you looking like us. <laughs> yeah, I think my wife's gonna cut it, cut it tomorrow. But there's, there's Mark right there. Hey, uh, Mark, can you hear me? Yes, I can. How are How you? you? Doing? I'm doing good. How you doing, man? I'm well. I'm well. I appreciate you joining us tonight. Oh no, thank you so much for having me. You got any questions for me at all? Oh no, not per se. I looked at the plays. Um, okay. Just that when you're playing the plays, will we just say pause it right there? How will we? Yeah, so what I'll do is, and it kind of lags depending on you know people's connections and those type of things. So I try to run it twice game speed, and then I'll go twice slow-mo, and then you and Rodney just let me know. I'll navigate through it, stop, start, you know, whatever you need from me. Okay, great. How's Elijah, man? Elijah is great. We played nine holes today. He's hanging in there. Not, not the best time to be a senior in high school, you know. Been a little <laughs> locked up. Other than that, he's he's good. Good, good. Yeah, I got a senior in high school too. It's a weird time. It's a weird time, man. It's yeah. just a weird, a tough, tough time. Uh oh, I think we'll go with this. Here we go. I'm, I'm fancy here, guys. You got a, your background? I'm trying to switch my background, but I might mess around and blow up all of Zoom, so be careful. <laughs> Done. Did it switch? You grab me a water. Dang you got it. your... Uh... I got this, this screen just because I was fooling around with it, but I want to change this picture. You got the I Kobe whistles on. That's what you got. I know. I, I found a picture a different picture, but I can't get it to switch with when I get to the picture again. Uh, have you ever done this before? The virtual background? Yeah. Yeah, I have, but I just keep mine the same. But yeah, you'll just go to your... Yeah, I want to change this. I don't want to have any... Uh, is there any... Can you record this? Is this... Will this yeah. be like recorded? Or can yeah. any of the participants record it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm recording it, yeah. All right, I definitely... I just want to take this background off. But give me a moment. All right, we'll wait for you. No worries. I have one. Go, Mark, Mark, are you using your iPad? 
Yes. Go to the top, touch the top, and then you'll see the, the things come down. It says uh, mute, start video. But you got the three little dots. It says more. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you touch the three little dots. Hit virtual background. Hit that. Now I'm in my pictures. And then change it at the bottom where the plus sign is. Change it to whatever you want. Okay, hold on. Does, does the plus sign come up at the bottom? Yeah, yeah, there's a plus sign, but do I hit the plus sign after I pick the picture or before I pick no, the picture? No, I, I think, here, let me try mine. Um, yeah, no, you hit the plus sign, and then it's going to ask you to access your photos. And then you I'm pick in my photo photos now. I'm in and my photos pick, now. Once I pick, pick one? Yeah, pick the photo you want, and then hit done, and that should work. Oh, okay. Then I X out, it'll be back. Okay. Yeah, it should be. I'm trying to find this one. There's one of Rodzilla in here. I'm trying to find it. <laughs> Rodzilla. That's a new I one. It. Dude. I like that. <laughs> oh. There. No, that's not him. In any event, well, I'm ready to go whenever we, we can keep it there. I'll figure it out at some point. Hey, Junior, Rod. What? I, I had it picked up and everything, and then, or maybe done. Let's see. Is it switching now? No, nope, still there. That's now you're back. All right, I'm ready to start. I don't don't, don't wait on me to do to, to do that. You guys. Okay, let's let's go ahead and get started. First, I want to welcome everybody, all the DDR members, of course, founder Rodney Ma, and excited to have NBA Finals Mark Davis on. A few announcements before we do get started. I want to uh, thank Pat Medine and Perchel officials. I believe Pat is on here for giving two $25 gift cards. The way we're going to do that is Erin Galloway is on here. She has a roster of everybody, one through 66 of you. And then she's going to pull some numbers out during the meeting. And at the end of the meeting, she'll then go ahead and uh, announce who the two winners are. And then DDR will get with you guys as far as how they'll figure out to get you the $25 gift cards. Um, also, I did want to touch on, I just said it earlier with Rodney Mott, and he's going to be doing some, trying to do some virtual reality camps and training in June and July. So look out for those announcements. I think that's going to be something that's pretty cool during this, this weird time. Extre uh, extremely excited about tonight's meeting. As always, great staff. We're going to be going over block charge plays. So we have eight clips, and we'll see if we can get through all of them. Uh, the first one is a good one right off the, the bat. It's going to start a lot of conversation. Rules of engagement, same stuff, highly professional, um, highly respectful of each other. But of course, we do want to mute that. Um, we want to be respectful of each other, but please mute yourself in the background. So if you're not talking, make sure you're muted so that um, it doesn't interrupt when they're talking. But if you do want to ask questions, you can unmute yourself or go into the chat. And myself and some others will check that throughout the uh, throughout the meeting, all right? So we'll go ahead and get started. I'm gonna share my screen. Again, it will lag a little bit depending on your connection. I'll try to go through it twice game speed and we'll get into it two slow-mos and uh, go, go from there, all right. This one have a replay as well. So that's the one and we'll get a replay angle. Hopefully it's good with you and Mark and, uh, and Rodney on your end. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Yep, I see it. So we may be good just on this, all these uh, replays, we may not need to go through it again. Yeah, cause we got a lot of views on it. Okay. I think that was it. Yep, that's it. Okay, uh, first thing here, we have double whistles and we have two referees that failed to make eye contact, number one. So therefore we got a blarge, correct? Correct. Whose play is it, first of all? Who's the primary, who, whose primary is it? Fleet. Interesting. Is it at the Chiefs play, Rodney? Are you tell me what 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 is it? Lee's play or or it's, center? 
it's a center's play. It's a center side uh, mm -hmm. drive. And it's outside of the key, correct? It's up, yeah, it's outside the lane. Who can who can see the side to side movement the best? The center. The center. Mm -hmm. Any others? Any other tries? I say lead. I think Lee does. Absolutely. Hey, Mark. Mark. Yes. Okay. No, Mark, Mark Veer. Yes. You started from the top. Started from the top, Mark. Okay, that's that's a secondary defender. Yes. So it's leads. That's the leads. Okay, start it from the beginning, please. Freeze, right there, freeze. The center is primary, the primary defender is B. My eyes now go where? To the secondary defender. Because the, the, the defender behind cannot hurt you. So now you're going to the next defender that can hurt you. So as you can look at this center right there, his eyes will not transfer to the secondary defender. He is watching the ball dribble, the dribbler, correct? And now he picks up, I don't even want to say he picks up the, the, the secondary defender. He, he, he referees the crowd versus what happened. So right there, Spreeze, what look does he have at, with the defender? Does he have an open look with the defender? He has no look. He has no look. Referees right now is a crash because he never. First of all, he never trans transitioned to the secondary defender, and now you can't even see. It. Can Can I add something on this play? Sure. Yeah, being that he has backs, he probably any whistle he has would be a guess. So I think he would have to give the play up to lead if possible. Um, and actually, if none of them blow, Trail has an actual open look if he had an opportunity for cadence. But the bracing up, I think the defender's foot is bracing up when you have the uh, other view. So it would be hard. I think Senator would have to have a lot of whistle discipline on this play knowing that he has a back of the offensive play and he doesn't really have an open look between the defender and the offensive player to see if the defender was legal or what did the defender do wrong. Thank you. Good. First of all, we do not guess on plays. We do not guess. We have two other officials on the floor who have a look at the play. So if the slot or the center cannot does not have an open look, trust your partners to have a look. So he guesses on the play. The lead has a look at the lateral movement. The trail also has an open look, but did not have a whistle. So the thing here is first, transition to your secondary defender. Number two, make it is critical that you make eye contact with your partner because now we have a double whistle on this play. I think we have a triple, don't we, Rodney? That's three whistles. Yeah, we have a triple, yeah. Oh, yeah, excuse me, sorry. Yeah, triple whistle on this play. Yeah, that trail did blow. Well, he put his fist up. Yeah, the triple whistle just makes it 50% more wrong. And they all blew on contact. Hey, can, Mark, can you go back to the beginning of that? Because I think sure. this is a good play. We can really go into this play and maybe just play it through all the way. Sure. Just play it. Okay. So if we go back to the top of it, if we begin there and we think about it from this, after seeing this play a couple of times, what's the one thing we can agree on that it's, it's what? That it's not a no call, right? It, it's, it's something, do we agree that we should have a whistle on this, Absolutely. on this contact right here? Absolutely. Okay. So when we're talking about slot side drives, they're really difficult. And when we do, 
if you think about like um, in our league, what they've done is they've done a lot of player tracking. Like where do people who shoot most from? Where do, what does this player shoot from? Where does he shoot from? And if, if Mark would just draw a little line right at the elbow, the uh, slot side, C, C side elbow, right from there going down towards the block is where we have the most, our most errors. And the reason is, is because we got the slot. If we keep the play going, all right, freeze it. All right, if we go back, just go back just a click. You want to contact Mark or? No, 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 go back just when he first beats him. When he first beats him, there's a couple of things we can talk about. Go back, go back a little bit, go back, go back. Okay, freeze it right now. So right now we know we're about to have a slot side drive right from that side and so we know look two players have already been beat so they're definitely in a help situation the defense is rotating right you got four blues you got the guy at the lane line extended you got the kid in the corner who's cutting back door you got the other side over here the weak side you got two players weak side one elbow when they're on offense so you got and you got three defenders two offensive players have already been beat so we know we're going to have secondary defender, some help defense, right? So let's go over which one of all of our, who's our help. So slot, at the slot, he's been beat. He's, he's got to expect that the play's coming to the basket. So he's, he's not on the trail defender anymore, although he would normally have to be involved with the trail defender too for a trip from behind. But how do we pick, so what is the lead? If you're the lead, who are you refereeing right now? Take it back one more second before we get there. One more second. Go back right there. Okay. So let's go there. Stop right there. If we can anticipate, he's been beaten. He already beat four up top. And now he's beating the second help guy when they tried to push him off on the dribble, right? Now he's coming to the basket. So now it's important. The longer we can see a play, the better we'll be at it. So we got three defenders and four offensive players. So there's some kind of rotation coming, right? So we got the defender that was guarding the guy in the corner on the strong side. We got the guy who's denying at the top of the key, the defender denying at the top of the key. And then we've got another defender who is out the lane looking to help too. So that first, that one there. So how the lead is closed down, good, which is good because we need him to close down on this. Um, so now we're, he's going to the basket. So which guy, which defender should the lead, freeze it right there. Which defender should the lead be on right now? I'm going closer to the outside three-point line. I wouldn't. The lead, well, I can tell you. So I would say hold off for that for a second. I, I, I would say no to that. Anybody have any other suggestions? If you're asking, you should be on white number 13. White, white 13. At the elbow. At the okay. elbow. Yeah, All right. 33 or 13, whatever that number is. Okay. I'll, I would disagree with that, but I'll tell you why. And I see why you say that. He's in what would be considered his primary of responsibility, right? 13 is. Whoever whoever said 13. 13 is in the lead's primary area of responsibility. We would agree with that. But I would disagree with that's who the defender he should help. If you think about it, when all the teams, when they work on their schemes, and they work on help defense. Right now, if I was at the lead, I'd be closed down, which is exactly what this gentleman is doing. And I'd be figuring out which help defender am I gonna go to. And the key for figuring out which defender to go to, the one that's coming, the one that's gonna challenge the play is the first one that moves. So go back, sec, go back again, go backwards. All right, oh, oops, okay, freeze it. So right now it could be anybody. It could be the guy at the top of the key. It could be the defender on the weak side, guarding the guy in the, in the corner, or it could be the one at the weak side elbow, the one the young lady said, number 13. It could be any of them, right? But the tell for where the competition is gonna be, where the competitive matchup is gonna be, is the first one that moves. He's the one that's in rotation. So now let's see which, which of those three defenders that are there, which of those three defenders that are inside the, Three point arc. Let's see who moves first. Who moves first? Freeze. Who moves first? The guy on the wing. The guy on the wing. The guy on the wing. So that that's where your competitive matchup is gonna come. 
because that's the guy who's in rotation who's coming to help. So that's where I would suggest that the league go to. Even though I think fundamentally I understand why you're saying 13, but that's that one that circled, that's where the competition's going to be. He moved first. That's a good key for when you're figuring out the secondary defender who's coming. It's the first one that moves. Okay? Because if the big fella who came over to help on this stayed in front, he'd have stayed attached to the corner. It'd have been nobody. But he moved first. That's a good tell that that's going to be where your competitive matchup is. Now, the center, the center or the slot has a high level of anxiety because this is close to him. He's got to expect that he's got to be prepared to have a whistle because we all agreed it's not nothing. But he doesn't have, he's got to trust his partners and he should be grateful once he hears another whistle that he should back down and let them have it. So let the play keep going. Why, let's watch the help defender, the one we said we're on. Now we're on that help defender for a long time. Now do we have block or charge on that? Charge. Okay, that's fine. And and, and I, don't, I mean, I don't really care whether it's block or charge. I just think once you look at that player, once we looked at that help defender longer, it was much easier than the first time we watched it when we just saw the ball went right into right into the crash. Would you hey, agree? Mark? Yes. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go with you. With no, no, no. That's it. no, 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 no. I have something after that, but but go ahead with your question. Oh, uh, no, I'm I'm good. Uh, does somebody okay. else have a question for me on that? I have a uh, a question uh, uh -huh. on movement on movement. Okay. For you or uh, or Rodney, um, for the slot or the center, on the drive to the basket, which way would you prefer that slot to move to try and get an open look? I prefer that he go up or down and not do the button hook thing. Um, I would say go back to the first view of it because that's the best. See this? That was actually a good. That was a good one to discuss it from another perspective. But let's. Okay, right now. Okay, freeze. Right now, he's in. He's okay right now where he is. If he if the if the defender would if the offensive player was to pull up at a quick jump shot, maybe a half a step down to his right towards the baseline to pick up point of contact on the elbow tick, maybe. You know, if he were to pull up, moving that way. But right now, I definitely would not go up. I wouldn't go towards the sideline and I wouldn't come on the floor because even if you come on the floor, if he comes on the floor trying to get to that defender and that's where the help defender is coming from, there's no need to, need to go on the floor. But when we see sometimes people that button hook and come onto the floor, if he pulls up right now, you're just putting yourself in a stack behind. Him. So I like staying right where he is. I don't like the fact that he's leaning going up. I would rather his right foot be planted down so his next movement should be towards the baseline. So let's see what he does. I would say to the right. He should move down to see that. But being still is not a problem. I don't have a problem with him being still. But let's let it keep going. And we can talk about, okay, freeze right there. So once we know that we have a whistle there, anytime we have a help defender and in the center or in the lead, you're going from one thing to another thing on a block charge play in the lead in the lead you should anticipate that somebody may have another whistle right you should anticipate that and then you know if you're a center you're going if you're going if can you guys see my hand in my eyes I don't yeah. know, can you, okay if you go from here and you're coming to there you have to say you have to realize that okay maybe I need to have a whistle or maybe I'm gonna have a whistle, but you know you don't have a good look like that. If you're looking, you, do you understand what I'm saying? So if I'm at the center and I'm going, whoa, bam, beep, I should have an expectation that my partner's gonna have a whistle also. And then I don't wanna come up with any kind of cadence. And to me, if we were really on our game here, the center would have a secondary cadence, the lead would have a primary cadence, and the trail would, would not be involved at all. Because there's no reason to have a, a, a it's no reason for the center of the trail to have a whistle once the lead has a whistle on that play. 
It's just poor whistle discipline where our eyes are that we're all where we're, we're all at, at the same place and nobody realizes who the, who the primary defendant, who the primary official is, who should have a primary whistle, who should have a secondary whistle. Let's talk about primary and secondary. To me, the lead has the primary whistle on display. So if we were really on our game, the center and the trail, but although they may have an opinion, they would not have blown their whistle because their partner already had it. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. If, if you go back to the beginning of the play, mm -hmm. if you go back to the beginning of the play, Uh, three right there. You can tell right now that we have, first of all, we have six eyes on the ball, correct? Because mm -hmm. everybody's right. watching the ball. Nobody's going, nobody's saying, when is my, where is my next decision coming from? Correct? So we all agree on that. So if, 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 if we are referring our primary, if we are referring our primary, we can anticipate where our secondary defender is coming from. We can anticipate the help defender. Just like Mark said, we can say who moved first because if we're in our primary, we, we can anticipate that play because I don't really care what the ball handler is doing out there because I'm not going to make a play from the trail or from the lead of where the ball is right now. So I'm going to, I'm going to be looking at my, for my next secondary, my secondary defender. Who can hurt me on the play? So because we're all we were all looking at the ball, if you back it up maybe a couple of frames, you can see the trail is on ball where it, the, look at the, the trail head is on ball as well. The trails is, is on ball. And we already know the lead mm. because the lead really has nothing in front of them. So the lead can anticipate this play very easily. He can transition very easily because he all we know is the ball is always going to come to the back. Coming to the basket. So the key is to referee your primary, get to your next competitive matchup, and like I said, go, go to the basket and hurt you. Because right now, everybody's head is on the ball. Any other questions on this play for Mark or Rodney? I, I have a question for you guys. Um, just talking mm -hmm. about the play, do y'all have a, a, a block or a charge on this play? I, I, I think it's like a block by like a half a click. I mean, sorry, I think it's an offensive foul by like a half a click. I say a block, I say a block. I think the defender stepped over into the path to receive the contact. Looks like you beat him though to the spot. Unless we can all Mark it's, Daniel. A tough play. it's a tough play. That's why you can't referee you cannot referee this play for one tenth of a second. Mark, can you hear me? Like Mark, Mark said, Davis? I have a whistle on this play. Yeah, I, I think it's an offensive foul if you had to have something. And I think we do. I just by a half a click. Go back to that view. The last one that was over the, over the top, which is an impossible view because no one hangs from the ceiling. But if you go look at the right, look at the go back. We're going to look at Robinson number five. We're going to look at his right foot, and then we're going to look at the at, freeze it. So now, if you're looking at this play now, like you're in video tape to to look at this play, if Robinson's right foot gets down before the uh, the defender's plant foot gets goes down, then he's there. He beat him to the spot. And I think, and if you go to the side view, which I think is back a little bit, I think that right foot gets down before the kid's foot gets down. So you go with the block or a charge? Crazy. I, I, I think it's offensive foul. But I, I think it's so hard. to. I don't even think that that's the point of, of the exercise, to be honest. Which, which team is, which team is uh, VCU? Yeah. Oh, I think it's a. I think it's offensive foul by just that much right there. His right, yep, right foot. There. His right foot's down. down. Before the other one, right foot. I mean, so if he, mm. I get the fact he beat him to the spot. Bear. Bear. Tough play. <laughs> Tough 
top. But that's a really good tool. I've never heard the tool. Um, the, I'm the, saying. The, so, yeah. Down before. So block because the way he was moving to the side as he's coming in. Okay. It looks like a charge. Yeah, personally, I don't see anything that the defender did wrong. Like I said, the, the right foot being down, that other foot is just a brace up to, to uh, take the impact of the play. Okay, ready? we want to get into play two? Or any more questions? Yes. Okay, let's go play two. Play two. All right. Okay, we hey, Mark, can you do me a favor, Mark Veer? Yes. Can you mute, mute everybody except for uh, Rodney and Mark? Uh, yeah. and, and let's start over with the unmutes because I'm hearing a whole lot of background. I got you. I'll do it right now. Yeah, I was hoping people were going to hold on. Um, okay. Should be good now. Thanks. Appreciate it, Reggie. All right. Let's get into clip two. I'll go slow mo. Okay. It's all yours. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay, let, let's check out positioning first. Whose play is it? Flat Lee, side. Leeds. It's Leeds play. Yeah, definitely lead, secondary defender. I agree with that. Same thing. Better Both run. secondary defenders. That's that's one on one lead. It's the center's play. It's a pass and crash. The lead goes with the pass. The center takes the crash. That's the women's mechanic. That's the way I was. That's the way I was taught about that play but let's see if we can take it to another level or let's take whoever made that comment let's look at what we just said on the previous play and see who has the best crack at it who who do we know has no shot at it trail that, Is a contact by the offensive player legal or illegal? It's a block or charge. It's a charge. Charge. Did, did the offensive player go through the defender? No. Let it keep going, Mark. Let it keep going after the cop. Let it keep going. A little more. On your question, I would say no. She didn't go through it, but she looks like she raised her elbow, her shoulder a little bit when on the contact. Did she raise her elbow or does it look like she raised her elbow or did she brace herself? She braced herself. It looks like the momentum. Uh, that's what I would say. I don't have a charge on that play. I think she splits the two defenders and we got a foul on the shot as off the pass. Is it too much contact to ignore? I don't think so. I think the de defense tries to make you make a decision, and they made a decision. She split the two defenders by trying to avoid the con contact. And the uh, officials did their job. They went with the crash. The center did, went with the crash as they're, as they're disciplined to do, and the lead was very disciplined in going with the path. 
So you like you like no call on the crash and just the obvious foul on the after the pass. I do. Yeah, I I do too. I agree. I don't. In, in my opinion, the offensive player did not go through the torso of the defender. Yes, there's contact. I just think, I don't think there's enough contact to cause that defender to react in that manner. The only thing I would have liked to have seen was the center to maybe take a little bit of a step up a little bit onto the court just to get a little bit of a better look to see through the two defenders it would have been a little bit more convincing for me because he gets a little – the other offensive player does get into his view just a little bit, but I, I do – think he had a very good look at the call um, at the time. We're looking right through the play, right there where you're freezing it. He, he has a pretty good look at, at all the defense, both the defenders right there and the contact that occurs at that moment, that point of contact. Well, we're not all, we're not all, ref let's, let's take each defender and let's say who has each defender. Because to me, the slot would have the help, the, the help coming from the, the corner. And the lead would have the pass and crash contact, or at least before it became before it became a pass. At the very least, let's say she'd have been shooting a layup there. Who would we want to have that play? It would take the, the pass and crash. It would be the leads, right? And on yes. the pass, I I think you're saying I'm agreeing with both of you. I thought you were saying the same thing that you're you're I, passing on. Yes. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on this clip? Okay, you want to get in clip three? Hey, uh, Martin. Yes. Real quick, this is Michael. I wanted to ask, is this a play that we believe the, the trail would have be able to, to help with, maybe at a cadence? Because I feel like he might have a good angle from, from his side, uh, video side, that it seems like he could see the contact at least between the – the two players that are in question, not the second, not the help defender that C has, but uh, maybe, I, I don't know if he could, could he help on this? Is this something he could help? On? Michael, I, I think so. Look at, we, we pretty much have a similar view to the trail. Look how open it is to us, what we're looking at right now. And Mark, my question would be uh, to Mark, what would be, uh, like Reggie asked earlier, what can the C do to get into a better position? Or is there anything that they can do to get into a better position in this particular play? That C side, weak side lane drive is a bear for the center. And I think that's the point of all of these plays is that the lead really doing a good job on all these plays. Look at the lead between the D and the U. He's, he's closed down to get to her to help defender. I think that that's, from what I see from these, play, these plays, that's the lesson is that the lead has got to stay engaged. Even though when we were teaching this, you know, one-on-one level, two-on-one level, we're saying that there's a line that bisects the middle of the paint and everything on that side is his or something along those lines. That's it. But we're not really refereeing the ball. Rodney said the ball is coming to the lane. So who's got each defender? Once we know who's got her, who's got her, who's got her, then we're in a good position to referee this. To me, Michael, I think I agree with you. I think the trail should have some perspective on that pass and crash as well. I think the view that we have on this is similar to the trail's view, and I think the center's view is very difficult. So I, I if, let's say, not, not this play, but let's say this play, she, the defender, the offensive player goes through and walks over the top of 25, you know, where it clearly goes all the way through. I mean, or if it, I think that that would be, and on the pass, I think that'd be perfectly fine for the trail to come in and call that play. And if, that, you come in, if you're coming in, Mark, you better be waving the shot off. Well, is there any scenario where that play could, you could score the basket on that? I, I'm, I'm specific to different rules, like being not a loose if ball the, foul. Not if the offensive, not if the foul is on the offense. Oh, you're saying if it's a block. If you're calling that, if you're calling this this passing this play here, if you're calling the block, you better come in and wave it off. If I'm calling it a pass crash and, and the foul occurs first before before the the uh, the offensive player gets into her act of shooting, then then you got to come in and wave that shot off. 
Okay, because in that scenario, even if you have an offensive foul, you could conceivably have blown it after the player began their upper shooting motion and you score the basket. That's a question. I mean, I don't. I'm, I'm. That's a legitimate question. I don't know the answer. Under 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 high school rules, uh, if the ball is still in her hand, even if she's in the upward shooting motion, you wave it off. If the ball's been released, then you'd score it. Okay, great. Any other questions on this? All right, good discussion. Let's get into clip three. That's a good clip, Mark. Call oh, ESPN. <laughs> oh That's a block. I can't wait to hear this block. hear this discussion. Definitely a block. Because uh, because I'm gonna do this right defenders now. leaning back. It seems I like the defender is falling, falling back. The defender is not vertical, straight up. He he leaning back. Okay. He's going. He's going back on his. I mean, he's not the play happen. That's what I think. He's not letting the play happen. He's just all right. Free, free, going there, back freeze it there, Mark. Go back. Go back. Freeze it there, Mark. Go back a, a click. Oh my Before goodness. we even get there, so we don't get tied to it. To me, the defender, if he's moving to his right, has to have his right foot down prior to the plant foot going down for the per for the offensive player. So let's look and see. Get ready. To just go real slow. Okay, freeze it now. He looks planted there. Go back just a little bit. Go back just a little bit. Go backwards. He's legal. Okay, before he, the, up, the ball goes upward, upward. Is the ball going up yet? Hey, Mark, Mark, yeah. Mark Davis. Yeah, I'm here. Hey, for high school, this is Johnny High School. For high school, he has to be, he has to get legal legal garden possession prior to the offensive player leaving the floor. Okay, so he's in definitely there. He, he in does. High school. Then he's definitely there. Yeah. Yeah, he's legal. Yeah. He's legal, but I mean, the body, the body going back, I mean, is, is that legal? You no, can go back. I don't any position on the floor that you legally acquire behind you. How is going back? If somebody's coming at you, how is going retreating? How is that? That's different than two of uh, two players moving in a in a similar path. School, you and you know one beats it to the other to absorb I, the contact. Yeah, I guess I, that's, the, that's the mistake that a lot of high school officials do is they go much by the body movement going back and making sure those two feet are planted on that floor, you know? Yeah, yeah I, I, I mean, it's a tough Mark, play, man. Rodney, 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 Rodney. Mark, the reason we had this play, the reason we had this play, I don't see what's illegal. But just, just a quick comment on what Mark said about the plant foot. It's not necessarily seeing the plant foot, it's all about a rhythm on that plant foot and the defender alighting from his from off his uh, on his upward motion, so it's more of a rhythm. So you can tell by the rhythm. You're not looking at the feet and saying, "Oh, was this foot planted? Or was that foot planted? Or has he alighted already?" It's a it's about a rhythm, and we can see on this one that it's easy that it's a the, on the rhythm the, the defender is planted. Go ahead, Mark. Rodney and, and Mark. The, the reason we had this play was because of that very reason. Sometimes officials react to ugly plays and end up calling this a blocking foul because of the ugliness of what the defender did. That's why Mark and Rodney. Yeah, I can see that. I, I, if it was ugly to me, yeah, it's just, I mean, does anybody have appetite for no call on this? I think it's a no call. Yes. I, I would have a no call. I have a no call. I, I, no I can call. do a no call. Oh. I think it's hard. I, I think you can go that. But the way the rules are today, uh, can I add something? In high yeah, school, all the bodies on the floor. I just asked. Yeah, in high school and college, there's no way I think you can get away with a no call on this play. 
Yeah, yeah. coaches will want an explanation. Yeah, that, this is too much contact. And again, this is what they're trying to remove. I think this is one of those plays, I think Reggie was touching on it, that at different levels you might have different answers because we don't, I think the RA would really help on this play, but being that you don't have a restricted area, mm -hmm. then, you're, then you're left up to your judgment as far as, hey, was he planted, was he legal or not? Because in high school, I can see this being called a uh, charging foul because he, he does establish initial legal guard position. But I could also see in college where they'd want this to be a blocking foul. But neither one at those areas where I, that you can no call this play. Some would let, be needed. Let that's me true. let me let me add to that because I, I, I think that that's that's let's not talk about let's not go through called you know judgment on is this is that and call definition of we would have an incorrect call and no call. I think we can look at more at principles. And I think Rodney was speaking to the rhythm of getting to the foot. This is a very difficult play. And I think sometimes if we take them out of context, because there's different contextual circumstances to all of these difficult plays. But if we're just talking about it from a teaching perspective, from a coverage perspective, if we go back, Mark, to the beginning of that, and let's just pick on one, one teaching moment instead of a, like a call justification moment. If you pause, go back and click. Now this is the same thing we were just, if you go back right now and you see the two defenders, who's the first one to move? That's the first lesson. That's 34 going to the rim. So you got to expect to get there. All right. To get there. And then from there, once we get there, just freeze it right there. We there's gonna be a bunch of things. I don't like one, the lead's position is so far off the floor. Is this a two-person game or a three-person game? Question. It looks like three. Yeah. Yeah, that's three person. I don't like being that that far off. And we just talked about. You know, either you should be one or two things. Either you should be, to me, you should be wider here. He should be further back around the D to get some perspective. That wasn't a slot side drive. It's coming right up the middle. He seems like he walked himself right in the stack, and he's behind the other guy. And now he's doing one of the fundamental errors that we all we cannot make is guess. So, I in the call justification part about it, I, I don't I don't see that as uh, practically um, a good exercise in these environments. Um, so let's just talk about coverage wise, where we come from, who's our guy, who's the primary air responsibility, where's the help defender coming from, who moved first, how do we identify if we have two help defenders, which one do we take on a slot side drive, should the slot relieve that pressure, particularly after he's been beaten, he or she's been beaten, and we're really on a slot side drive, what we're saying is the lead needs to close down to help out on getting over on those plays. So. You know, the call verification is, is, is a problem in all of our games now because we just want to have it finite and be there. I think if you get the concepts and the principles, you've got a better chance of going, having, being 97% than trying to justify each call. And then you can sometimes be down in the 50%. Because So I, I, I would rather talk about just coverage. Who are we supposed to get? What should we get? Let's talk about some concepts. Because judging these plays individually over multiple conferences, multiple levels, multiple supervisors, you have to, you know, you have, there's a lot of adjustments there. And I, I wouldn't want to comment on or, or judge someone else's judgment based on the instructions that they've been given. But I would say be willing to talk about anybody with coverage and things like that, principles that surround the making the decisions. Okay. Hey, Mark, so what will be your call? On this play, I well, on this yeah. play would be easier. It'd be a restricted area block because that'd be right where the restricted area is. All right, all right. But now Sounds we good. really want to talk about this. Was the purpose of the restricted area was to stop players from coming over, and rather than have competitive plays at the rim where he attempted to block the shot, it was to disincentivize this dangerous play where even if he got there first, it's still dangerous for both participants. So that this play is the perfect example of why we have a restricted area to disencourage, to disincentivize these plays. And we'd rather him jump straight up and try to attempt to block the shot than the coming over, does he beat him, does he not? Offensive foul, both he is in danger as well as the offensive player. So that's um, where I would say, in, in, in my opinion, um, without a restricted area, 
I, I, I don't know. I might, I might I pass. I might pass. If I can, them. Mark. Huh? If I can, for yeah. all of our high school guys, if we have a whistle on this play, by rule, he's got legal garden position. So by rule, this is a charge if we have a whistle on this play in high school. In college, he's definitely going to be in restricted arc. He's a secondary defender. He's not jumping. This will be a block in college. But in high school, this will be a charge. Hey, Jason, Jason Mark, I, got I got a question. Go ahead, Jason. Um, I get taught um, about not waving off an athletic play like this. And so for me, I would go block on this and call it an and one just because of the athleticism of this play. I get taught by not penalizing stuff like that. Could that apply to this kind of play? Rodney, what do you think? I'm not understanding the question. So just, just because this is a highlight play, you you're gonna automatically follow the block that regardless of the legality of the defender? No, uh -huh. I'm just I'm I am i am saying um because I get taught with an athletic play like that where we try to award athleticism and not award like penalize you know stuff like this, you know, because I think from my perspective, lead is blocked. There's no way I think he can see whether or not he's in legal guard position. In my opinion, I think he guessed at this. And so I don't know, understand how you can go a charge on this play. Just on those merits alone. I could be wrong. Hey, Mark, I got a question. Go ahead. Hey, um, hey Mark, can you tell me where you would like for the lead to be on this play on the baseline? And then also, Rodney, can you elaborate on the rhythm, the takeoff rhythm uh, for the offensive player a little bit more, please? Rodney, go ahead, because Mark's not on. Go ahead. OK. Could you back up the play? Sure. Okay, stop. Stop. Right now, I need to, I need to oh, that's Mark. But I, anyway, I need the, the lead to get to a position and set. So I would say somewhere, I don't know what that is, an a, a and an I, somewhere around the A or the I. If he's set, because when it, when it, in transition, this looks like a transition play in transition, then I am coming down and I am picking up what? The defender that can hurt me. So therefore, I am going right to that, that secondary defender because the primary defender has already been beat. So in transition, I am picking up this defender. I am trusting my, my center to pick up this backside defender just in case there's a trip. But I am picking up this the defender. So I want to be somewhere around the A, and I think that's an I, or I and the D, somewhere around there. But I have them all the way. As far as the rhythm is concerned, like I said, I'm not looking at the necessarily looking at the feet. I cannot see the feet of the defender. And when the plant foot of the offensive player taking off happens. So it is about the rhythm. So I am looking at, I am refereeing the defender all the way. I don't really care about the offensive player. I am refereeing the defender all the way. So if you run it a couple of clips. So now, I, right now, I'm still on the defender. Now I can tell at that point right there, I can tell my defender is set. As far as the high school, he has to already be in, uh, lighted versus the foot being set to a light. I'm already on the defender, so I can just tell by the rhythm of the, of the, the defender being there and then the rhythm of the shot. So I don't necessarily have to see his feet. I can just see, I know my defender is set. When that rhythm of the shooter is jumping off his foot or lighting off his, off, off his plant foot. So it's easier for me to, to see the rhythm. But like I said, right now, the, the lead, because he is turned, he is looking over his shoulder. If he would have just ran and stopped and got to the, the A or the I and been there to referee to play, I would have had to, he had the defender all the way. But it's always difficult to referee while you're moving. Your eyes are moving, so therefore your concentration level drops. So 
as, as, as you can see, this referee starts to take a couple steps. His eyes are moving. That means his concentration is down, regardless of whether the person steps in front of him or his view is, is obscured. But the fact that he starts to walk tells me that the anxiety is there. And like I said, his concentration is, has dropped. Thanks. Any other questions on this clip before we get to the next one? Okay, let's get into clip four. Hey, can we can we go back to that just for a second? Sure. Just just for a second, just the end of it, just the end of it. I want the, the signal. Now we're, we're watch our lead, right? Like I said, it, this is this is like a, a highlight, bang bang play. So, and it could go. Let's face it, it can go either way. You can have a block or you can have a uh, charge on the play. Either way, but it's still a bang bang play because me, the ball is in the basket when the all the contact really occurs. So, if I'm coming out, the press, the, the signal in the presentation to the table has to has to reflect the play. So I'm not trying to, I'm not saying sell the play, but whenever you're coming out on a play like this, especially a play like this, you want to make sure you're coming out with sharp, strong signals and reporting so that there if there's any doubt in either one of the coaches' mind, whether it's a block or charge, that you're gonna alleviate that doubt or you're gonna minimize that doubt. So the, lot, the nonchalantness of just coming out, punching it, it's like, no, 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 you, you got to come up extra strong there, giving a signal, and even you, and using your voice to let them know that, hey, I, you know, I am sure about this play, whether you are or not, but I am sure about this play, because now it brings both the coach, whatever coach you called it against, it brings them down. That's it. Good point, yep. Okay, clip four. Okay, same principles here apply. Let's see when the when the foot plants, correct? That's a block. Right, because of the it, it is a block. Why? His, his, feet, Why? His, feet don't, his feet don't even look planted. It's, they're still in motion moving. That's what his, I see. Defender still sliding under. He is still moving when what? The offensive player plants to a light. His right foot planted. Yeah. Now I can't really see the eyes of the, the lead. I can't really see the eyes of the lead. But if you go back, go back about, uh, keep going back, go back. Go back, 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 right there. Stop right there. I can tell you right there, just from that clip, even though it's blurry, that that lead right now is watching the dribbler. He is not, he has, he did not pick up that secondary defender, right? Because he is watching the dribbler, even though the, trip, the dribbler has already beat his defender. So now, Instead of going to the dribbler, because I don't care if he goes through his legs, whatever he does, I am going to my the next person that can hurt me, the next defender that can hurt me. So I am going to the secondary defender. And you can, you can tell right now that he is watching the dribbler, watching the dribbler, watching the dribbler, and then he referees the crash. He sees the crash. I don't even want to say he referees the crash. He sees the crash. 
So my, I don't whether we want to call it a block or charge. My the point here is, you the lead or the ref, the referee that's in the if they're primary has to go to the next competitive matchup or the next defender that can hurt me. So if I if he was refereeing, I don't I can't see his number. If he was refereeing the defender on that play, it would be an easy play to say blocking foul. Can, can I add something on this play? In retrospect to the other plays that we saw in referee time, uh, wouldn't you say this play lead has a lot more time to make the adjustment to pick up the secondary defender or just stay on the secondary defender the whole time as opposed to that first play, which was the, when the Seaside Drive, where C had to really make an adjustment to pick up that secondary defender, whereas in this play, Lead has plenty of time in referee time to pick up that secondary defender and see that he's moving under the, the player after he's already, you know, in the air or lighted. Well, on the first play, the, I, I, I don't think the C had an opportunity to really pick up the secondary defender because the window closed very quick. But like I said, he never trans on the first play, he never transitioned from the from the primary defender to the secondary defender, by the time his eye got to the dribbler, and he can actually see a portion of the secondary defender, the window closed, so he did not have an open look. On this play right here, he should have been on the secondary defender the whole way. The only one he could have he could have, uh, also been on is the one that's sort of close to the corner for possible reach in. But we know the primary defender was already beat. He should have been on that secondary defender probably a second and a half. Easy. But we have a tendency to watch the ball and we have a tendency to watch the dribble. We do, instead of worrying about what's in your primary, we want to see what the ball handler is doing just in case he comes into our primary. And therefore, we miss secondary defender coverage. Hey, Rodney. Sure. This is Reggie. I uh, just want to reemphasize what you said earlier about this on this play as far as the, uh, the lead picking up the secondary defender late. Uh, whenever we pick up the secondary defender late and, and, and uh, end up catching the play at the crash or at the end, all of these type of plays will look like charges if we pick, pick them up late if we don't know the status of the defender. Because when that, when that offensive player goes airborne, he, the defender has enough time to make it look like he's taking it in the chest. I can agree. There's one thing that, I, this is a two person game. This is not a three person game. So the coverage is a little bit different because I agree with you about the secondary defender and the lead switching over, but the trail, who's opposite, who you can't really see in the video, he would have probably a better open look on the secondary defender because the drive is on the lead side and it's a two-person game, not a three-person game. Even can, can I get in there? Understand your hey, point. Even, even first game on this play, on a two-person game, once that's that primary defender is beat. Because that primary gets that primary de defender gets beat above the free throw line, extended. So therefore, it would have been the trails play. Once that primary defender is beat, my eyes immediately go to the secondary defender immediately. So I understand the two man system, and 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 in the two man system, he may have referee. Had the referee number, I, I, I don't know what that is, number two or number three over there, that's probably in a, a little bit towards the corner. He probably would have had to shift his eye just a little bit more. But, but once that drive starts and that primary defender is beat, he immediately should have went to the, the, the defender that can hurt him. It's not so much the trail on that, on that play. That is, the lead could have had, should have had that play easy. Whether it was a two-person game or a three-person game, still that lead needs to referee the defense. For him to stay on the ball handler for that entire trip 
would have caused him to be in the situation that Reggie mentioned a few seconds ago. And his instincts probably said, well, this is a pending drive. Who's coming to help just like a ball player would think. So I don't think we can, lack a better term, let him off the hook because of a two-person game. Because if he's refereeing a defense, he'd be saying, who's the next person that can hurt? And that could have been the, the help defender. Because that, you know, number two is going to reach. It would have been way out, out by the, the block or pretty high. But we, we can anticipate or see with our peripheral that that, that help defender is coming for a block charge play. Do we do we know the do we know the purpose of refereeing a defender? The the, the purpose is you, you want to referee the, the the player as long as possible. When we start to referee plays in two tenths of a second, or maybe three tenths of a second, and that and that's all of the play that we see. Nine times out of ten, we are going to be wrong because nine times out of ten, we are guessing on the play. So you want to be able to referee that player as long as possible. But when you transition from one to the next and you see the crash, you're only getting two-tenths of the play. That is the purpose of going to the defender. Any other questions on this play? Okay, let's get into uh, next clip five. Hey, Mark, I do have a question. I'm sorry, man. I'm Johnny Conway. Hey, ahead. can you go back to the end of that play when it happened and then the signal from that official? I want uh, if Rodney can comment on the compare and contrast between the strong signal that this official here uh, displays versus what the previous official displayed. Because just to let you know, in our state championship game, we had a game uh, to where the official gave a signal that looked like she was counting the basket. However, it should have been an offensive foul, and both teams were confused. And, it, it, it you know, the team maybe inbounded the ball, and she was trying to talk to the coach and explain it. And it was just a whole brouhaha because she gave a, a signal looking like she was scoring the goal, but she was actually giving an offensive foul, and it screwed up the whole, uh, the whole game. So you think this is uh he's calling it offensive foul. Did you yes, he's calling it offensive foul. However, uh, so, the previous the previous play, the, the official looked like he was actually scoring the basket. And a lot of times I see uh, in games in the high school games to where we're given we're actually trying to punch it, but we're actually you know putting our fist down, and it looks like we're actually scoring a goal. But this official does a great job of actually coming out with a strong signal, like you said, voice, power, projection, and strength. Uh, but also, we could put our hand behind our head for high school. You know, before we even give this punch, we can come up and blow with a fist up high, hand behind your head, uh, indicating a player control foul, and then punch it. And that would let everyone know there won't be any confusion that this is an offensive foul, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I, he's calling an offensive foul. I, I, I like a signal. It's strong enough compared to the one that we've seen previously. He comes out, he takes a step on the court, he gives a strong signal. I can't see his presentation to the table, but other than that, it's a, it's a strong signal. What I would say, though, we have players on the floor, I, I do not want to turn and start reporting to the, to the table while there's players on the floor, because I don't know what the reaction is of the players on the floor at this point. We have to be aware of the players on the floor. But it's totally different. But his, his, his signals and mechanics are totally different than the previous calling official. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right, clip five. Ugly. Can you go slow motion on that? Yeah, I will. I'm going back with two. Yeah, I got you. All right, here we go. These two will be slow. Thank you. No problem.
I'll do it again. It kind of looks like there's an elbow out there, too. Can we go back? Sure. Freeze. Whose play is it? Who's the primary? Slot, slide, drive. Send slot. Slot. So let's, let's watch the movement of our slot official. Run it a couple clicks. He straight lined himself. So once again, when we start to move, our concentration level drops because our eyes are moving. You referee better when you hold when you're standing still. So right now he walks down out of position, walks into a stack, run, run it a couple clicks. And now he just sees the defender go falling back. He does not, he does not even see the extended of the arm of the offensive player. Agree? Yes. Agree. Yep, agree. <laughs> Uh, so, once, once we see two tenths of a play, we're going to end up guessing. And like, like I said, nine times out of the ten, we are going to be. Hey, Ronnie. Yes. Just looking at the play, and I, I, I get the whole thing with taking a picture. It's easy, better to take a picture while you're standing still and while you're moving. Um, but two questions. Where would you want to see the stop at? To, to referee the play, and then uh, second, um, which foul, in my opinion, which foul occurred first? Was it the defender not being legal, because it's a primary matchup, or the push off by the offensive player? Just those two comments. If, if, you, deem, if you deem the uh, defender illegal, the, the push off by the offensive player trumps any illegal uh, deep uh, contact by the defender, other than anything that's flagrant. But if you if, if you go back, just go back a couple clicks. You ask me where you you want the C to be. The C should have already been in the spot, free throw line extended, because we already had a rotation. I'm assuming we already had a rotation, so therefore he should have already been at the free throw line extended. So now he starts to move down in position. And like I said, your con his concentration drops. With, with every step, his concentration is dropping. Kind of mm -hmm. he's late in that transaction on that switching there. I'm the sorry? Official. The official kind of looks like he's kind of late going down to his spot. Yeah, I, I don't think there was a rotation. I think, like the gentleman mentioned beforehand, C didn't get there to accept the play. He's like getting there at the same time, you know, as the action occurs, as opposed exactly. to being there to receive the play. I mean, that official right there with that yellow square on there, seems like he's got a pretty good view though. You mean the trail? The trail, yes sir, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. I'm over here watching TV now, watching it like it's on TV. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, run it a couple clicks. The play close to the trail as well. Right there, the play closes to the trail. How about the lead? No. No. Lead has back. So here we're saying, if you referee your primary and you get into the proper position, you will be able to referee that play. But when you're not in position, you don't get to your, uh, your your position on the floor or make even a position adjustment. Like if he was already at the free throw line extended in his position, he could have taken one step down or one step up, whatever it would have been to have to maintain his open look.
But once again, here we did not referee the defender because all he does is see the defender go flying back and he calls a blocking foul. He didn't, he didn't actually see the extension of the forearm by the offensive player. He did not see it. Any, any questions on this clip anymore? Okay, let's get into the next one. Go back right before contact. Same principle, right? Who's play? Lee. Who's the what well, it's slots right now. Secondary defender. Secondary Stop. defender. Please. Lee. Please. Okay, go back. Go back a couple clicks. Who's primary? Slot. I, I think leads. It's the secondary, it's a secondary defender. defender. It's always leads leads. primary. Leads. I thought we were speaking of where the ball was. I'm sorry. Absolutely leads primary. Yeah. Right? Run it. Remember, back to the plant, the, the planting of the foot, the right foot. So we got double whistles on this play, correct? Yes. From the lead and the center. Yes. Hey, Rodney. Yes. Wouldn't we want, just a little question, wouldn't we want the lead to be a close down or pinch in the paint on that play? Yes. Yes. Looking at the position, I would want, I would want the lead right around the, the S or the T, somewhere around there. At least around the S, right around the S, the three foot posted up mark. Here we have, we have the same thing. We, if we pick up the defender, go back, uh, run it back. If we pick up the defender, because we have somebody, we have the slot not picking up the secondary defender until the crash. If you look right there, watching the ball, watching the ball, watching the ball, and now the crash. Ronnie, I got a question. Sure. Uh, if you want the lead to be at the letter S, wouldn't be wouldn't she be looking through the defender, the help defender? Then she wouldn't be able to pick up the the offender's foot when she planted. No, the, the drive starts down the, the the weak side, correct? Yeah. Near, ball's in the center of the floor. The lead should close down. The drive starts down the the weak side, so therefore, what we call what we used to call pinch the paint or close down. So that's yeah. what we do. Right now, the lead stays too wide and too, and too far from the play. Okay. So that's yeah. why we, because if the lead comes in and the lead is at the, the three foot posted up mark, let's say right around the S, mm -hmm. then that is the only defender that the lead would have been refereeing. Okay. I think so CJ. Go ahead. Well, there was a comment about, there's been some comments about, uh, C should have been more patient, but in my mind, I think C did give Lee the opportunity to to adjudicate the play, and Lee's whistle came well after C had already given the secondary signal. So well, let's let's uh, determine why. Go back again. Go back. I, I agree with that. Back a little more. Back, back to where the ball is at the free throw line. Freeze right there, right there. Right there, freeze. Right now, we have this, the, the center referee and the dribbler. We have the lead looking out at the dribbler. The lead 
is not looking at that secondary defender. And our position at the league should be closed down. Can we agree? Agree. Now, now running a couple clips. The slot is still on ball, still refereeing the ball dribbler, the dribbler, the dribbler. And now the league picks and picks up the last two tenths of the defender. That's why the lead has a, what you call it, uh, if you want to say late whistle. Yeah, it looks like Shamir the whistle of the center. But we definitely have, well, first of all, we, we definitely have to have a whistle on this play, correct? This is not, this is not a, a call. And like I said, I just, I, just, I just want us to understand that we have to transition from the primary defender, once that primary defender gets beat, to a secondary defender, whether you're in the lead or if you're in the slot, if it's your primary, because we have to go to the next defender that can hurt us. But when we start to guess, or when we start when we see the last two tenths of it, this is the same play. We see in the last two tenths of it. The center sees the last two tenths of it. The lead, the lead follows the ball, follows the shooter all the way up and then sees the crash. And then doesn't react until after we have a whistle in the slot. So hey Rodney. I'm yes, sorry. Go ahead. No, the one thing I was I was gonna say was um, maybe something that can help with this exercise is it's not primary is not real estate. It's a defender who you're primarily responsible for. And the, the lead, as Rodney's saying, should be close. She should be closed down to the lane line, opposite lane line, because these are the slot side drives that we have trouble with and the help defender comes on. So primary area responsibility is not real estate it's open angles and it's defenders. And that is not the slots or the center's primary defender that help defender that comes over. So should the cadence have been switched? Yes. But let's go back to it again. Let's not talk about what they did. Let's talk about what we would like to happen. We would like this, the lead to close down. The lead right now should anticipate that close down. Go back even one more, Mark. Go back even further. Let's go through the whole exercise. Go back, go back. Go back. Are they, in, they must be in some form of transition. So she's there. First of all, she's in transition. The ball went up the other side. She should be at the three for the post-up mark right now. The ball rotates over. She takes a step down because she sees it's a slot side drive. Freeze it. Freeze it. Right now, the center is completely blocked out, trying to figure out what they're going to referee. There's no defender. The defender went underneath. We see the first defender to move is the defender where the charge ends up. So she moves first. When she goes, the lead should be on that defender. So keep it going now. Now let's just stay on that defender. He goes there, we're on the defender in time. We see the whole part of the play. And then we have a whistle. And the center should have no anxiety or no expectation to think that they have to have one because the lead should have one first because that's the lead's primary play i agree i think the center does wait and i think the lead has a little bit of maybe a little echo afterwards but it's that is a lead's play so not what they're doing now but what we want to do the next time we're on the floor is on a slot side weak side drive we're going to close down at the lead and we want to find the help defender on a block charge play or even a play challenge at the rim see that defender longer to make it it'll help us make better decisions that's the lesson to me on all of these plays Mark, I have a question on that. If that secondary defender is outside the paint, lead, lead still has primary coverage on that? I would say take that, take that whole play and put it up one step further out the lane. I mean, it's, she, she would have been on her longer. She would have been on her longer. I mean, if, she, if she'd have just done a runner there or she beat her and came farther, I mean, it's still, yes, in my opinion, yes. It's still, that's the help defender. It's not the primary defender of the slot. Now, you can pull it a couple places on the floor, and it would be easier for the center. But in this play, one more step. And let's say it's a little runner, a little runner like at the mid post. I still think it's, it's lead. I, don't, I think it, that's, that's her defender. 
Okay, thanks. Any other questions on this clip? Um, um, with the, I know we said the, the primaries are not real estate. Um, I know on the, the high school mechanic diagram that the C has half the paint. Is this something that the C could take maybe more than one or two steps down along the sideline to actually get a, a good look on the rest, on the end of the play versus, uh, versus staying where they're at? So if the, if the C comes down, well, they would have to come down quite a bit. But I'm saying is, is that would, if the C moved, because to move that quickly and travel with the play, being that low, is that is that a problem, or would that still be something where it's like that was that's a good move? If if, they, if they're moving, they're still moving to the set. There's go back to the beginning. All right, freeze it now. Who is responsible? Who has the young? Who who is the center refereeing right now? If you're in the center right now, who are you refereeing? The defender that's screen. actually screened back there, right there. Right okay. where the mouse is All right. That's fine. And the trail referees, where the center is not, so the trail is going to referee the, that trailer, 42 or 33, that defender to help, right? And the lead's closed down, and the lead's going to referee the neck to help defend on the beat. So keep going. Right now, freeze it. Who's the center referee in right now? Right now, he has nobody. Okay, let's because just say. Because the defender's beat. Okay, let's, oh, so he beat, so he's not, and, and she doesn't try to help or anything like that, right? She went under. So now, right. where he's standing, he still sees, let's keep going. He's got, what does he have? He has freeze, it's referee. Freeze it there, referee, ball, defender, right? Referee, offense, defense. That's not a good spot. You want to be the city defender. Who can see, where is it, referee, defense, offense? Lead. At the lead. Mm -hmm. So, Mike, so I think it was Michael that asked the question. Even if you're there now, I don't think the position is the issue of where he is. I think it's just the eyes. And – and when we're doing this the next time we're on the floor, we want that lead to have been on that play. Go back, Mike. Go back, Mark. All right, so we're going to freeze it. We're, one more. Go back further. One more. Before she moves. One more. All right, when she gets her right foot. Okay, now. So lead right now should be closed down. So put her on the S right now on a three-foot post-up mark. She sees it's a slot side drive. She takes one step to the lane line. Now keep going. She's trying to figure out which help defender she's gonna help with. The first one to move is gonna be hers. That's the big girl that comes across. Freeze. She's on her now. Okay, keep going. Contact. Freeze it right now. Slot's trying to figure out the play. Slot's all blocked out. Lead should have a whistle. Keep going. Keep going. Let it keep going. Lead should have a whistle by about now and come out with a signal, whatever decision she's going to make. Instead, the ball bounces, comes down to the floor, and then the center says, oh, we got to have something, and then the lead chimes in. That's because she came to it late. So that's what we want to do in a, in a perfect world is get down there and the lead, have that whistle, take the play, Yay, nay, block, charge, whatever. That's that's not the purpose of the exercise. Get to play. That's your primary area. Def the lead's primary area is the secondary defender on that play. So, Michael, you can put the center wherever you are. He's still going to have to move to get to see that play longer. Who sees this play longest? Let's see. The lead. The lead's going to have the best look at that defender. The lead sees the play the longest, so that's who we want to have to play. So let's look at – here's something I was thinking about the other day. When we're talking about, like, call validation, sometimes we look at – we look at where we fall instead of where we slipped. Does that make sense? 
when we only look at where we fell, then we don't get to the how we fell. So if we continue to look at how did we slip, where did we slip? Because you slip, you stumble a little bit, then you fall. So all these mistakes, all these plays have a progression to them. We have a sequence that we have to go through, and a mistake has a progression to it too. You're just a little, you're just one degree off, and then 10 miles later, you're way off course. So if we go through our fundamentals, and every time you're watching your tape, you go, who do I have? Which girl's mine? Which guy's mine? Which woman in my garden? Which man in my garden? Who's my man? And just go through that every time and get your eyes used to seeing it and recognizing it where you should be. It'll help you in your games. So, is, Mark, is this the last one or is there one more? Uh, this is the last one. This is the last one. So, yeah. I mean, you could go through a couple other ones just real quick and play it and then just put yourself in the lead in all these plays and then put yourself in the center in all these plays and just see who should you be refereeing. And should you have an anxiety to have a play, an anxiety to have a whistle? That's part of trust. Trust is, you know, the Celastic, referee defense, stay in your primary, call the obvious, trust your partners, be trustworthy. Hey, Mark, have, on, on, yes. on that particular play, what's your best advice to these young officials from a center position where he or she did not get a good look and is basically using their basketball IQ because he or she realizes there needs to be a whistle, correct? So what is, your, what is your advice to them? I mean, they have to blow the whistle. So they're going to take the hit for the call, most likely incorrect. Well, I, I, well maybe I'm misunderstanding the question, but they don't have to t blow the whistle on any of these plays because someone else blew their whistle. The lead blew. I'm talking about the play that we just had where she, he gave the opportunity to the lead to blow. She didn't. And he came oh. in and blew the whistle, realizing he had players on the floor and we needed a whistle. Let me look at it from that perspective again. So she, he gives her the chance to blow. He doesn't see the whole play like, you talk, like we talked about. But he realizes, I got two bodies on the floor. And he just went with an educated guess. Correct? Yeah, I agree. I'm just, what's, what's the question? What should his Some of the young guess? officials may not blow or I'm, I'm trying to figure out the question for you here. It's, it's yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know that you got to blow the whistle. I know Roddy does. I mean, but some younger guys may say, oh, that's her play. Let her live and die with it. Or, I mean, are, are we trying to let them say, hey, yeah, we got we to gotta have a whistle on this play. I'm just going to take an educated guess and blow an offensive foul. And let's just say you were the supervisor of this crew. What I would, would you tell them? If I was a supervisor of the crew, I would, we would come in the locker room and I'd say whose fault it would be. And the lead would raise her hand first and say, that's my fault. I should have closed down. That was my defender. I should have got over there earlier, and I should have had a primary whistle. And what would you tell the slot? I would tell the slot on this play, not being able to hear the whistle, I would say that you should allow your lead to call that play. And if she doesn't, then you have to – we have to have something on a play. And I, I, I think it's fine with an offensive – yeah, I think it's fine with that. I just – at the center, if I was at that play, I would not blow my whistle. I'd have no anxiety to blow my whistle on a play that is not my primary responsibility. Can, your, can your, 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 error, your percentage of errors is going to be much greater when you guess. You do, don't guess. Leave the play alone. Mr. You Davis, can I say something? Yes, sure. Uh, you know, to help the young man that asked a question to you, it's kind of simple. If you don't know, don't guess. Leave it alone. If you're 100% sure on that play, yeah, then come in late. But if you don't know, you don't come in late just because some, you, you leave it alone and then you talk about it later. It's simple. Don't know, don't guess. Well, he, I think he was well, busy. I, yeah. At, at I'm sorry. Or, and we, you know, you know, the action itself dictates that we should have a whistle on it, whether it's late or whether you want to call it a late whistle or whatever. But the bottom line is, I think the question was, as far as the young referees, if you're going to take a guess or have a guess on the play or not putting it saying, oh, it's not my primary because we have, you know, two or three bodies on the floor. I think the question was, if, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, that a young official should just put, or asking, should a young official just put air in the whistle based upon their level of experience. Is that correct? 
Yes. Yes. I mean, I would have blown my whistle from the trail on this play if needed to center order. With that look right there, the look that we're looking at, and those bodies on the floor, I probably would have blown my whistle at the trail if it was a center and the lead didn't have it. But we're talking about teaching from the perspective of what we want to have. And in this one, we want the lead to close down, get to that secondary defender, and allow her to make the decision first. And she should be – she should have an aggressive – primary whistle on that play because that shows and signals to her partners that she's well aware of the mechanics and she knows that that is her defender. At some point in time when you know a supervisor comes in and asks you why didn't you have a whistle on that play and and you own up to it but if you're the center and you say you know I I refereed the play with the information that I had and he refereed with the information that he had at the time and he felt like it needed a whistle and he put air in the whistle with the information that he had on it and he's a 50 50 play in his mind he, he took a 50 50 better 50 percent right or than 50 percent wrong than 100 percent wrong so you know as a supervisor i think they'd rather have a whistle on that play than not and and the lead understanding that she made a mistake she needed to get in position and now she can do better the next time and the center understanding that these you know he's out there for a reason too as a crew and he's got to be a part of the crew and not just saying, oh, I'm not putting an air in the whistle because it's not my primary or I don't want to do it because I'm not sure or I'm just not 100%. You're never 100% on everything. So I think you've got to be a part of the crew. I agree. The only thing we can agree on on this play is that it's not a no call. So no whistle is you're, you know you're going to be wrong. Hey, Mark? Yes. Yeah. And I, can you – uh, relate that to the comment that was made earlier, comparing severity of the play to no look, no no whistle, as the young as the gentleman mentioned earlier. Where, like you said, we all agree that this play warrants a whistle from somebody. So this is just helping the crew by C taking the play because Lee, for whatever reason, passed or was late. So there was a comment made about, well, if you don't know don't blow, but in this case, the severity of the play warrants a whistle from somewhere. No, I would, I would, I would agree with that. I understand what the gentleman was saying. If you don't know, don't blow, because we don't want to guess. But we must, we will agree on this play that we need a whistle. And then I think it goes to the other young ladies uh, who just spoke. Said that you got to go with the information that you have at the time. You have to make it. And at the time he blew his whistle, he felt like he'd given the lead an opportunity. The lead did not blow their whistle. He went with the information he had, and he called an offensive foul. And, and we got to live with that. I think that's perfectly fine. We just don't want to justify our actions after the fact. Because what happens when you do that, you start judging your partners out there. And that's a dangerous, dangerous road to go down when you start judging your partners. Any other questions on this? It's our last clip, and then we'll get into the, the, the raffle. I, do, I got a question. Go ahead, Troy. So uh, as a young official, you know, where it starts for me is at the, the pregame conversation. And so um, I guess my question is, how do I, as a young official, try to um, get the vibe of the older officials so that they know, hey, I'm here to serve this game. I'm here to do what I need to do. If I'm wrong, tell me if I'm wrong, because criticism, you can only get better. And so my question is, what kind of question do you ask to get um, that better flow, that better communication? I think one good thing is you can use plays and examples. Like you can use a play like this and say, hey, I have, you don't have to come, come from a position of, hey, I got a question about this play. Let's go and bring the play up. And then that will, will elicit a lot of conversation. Whenever we have con- – one thing referees have no problem about is talking about refereeing. So once you get the conversation going, you'll be surprised – at where it will take you and you've at least got the conversation going as opposed to saying hey can we do a pregame I don't think you have to say it that way I think you can just say hey there's a play I saw whatever I saw it last night in a game I watched I watched it in the JV game before I watched it in the varsity game before how 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 would you suggest we handle that play if it happened in our game and I think that's just a, is a conversation starter around basketball around mechanics and then you can feel each other out and have conversations around. 
Okay, thank you. Any other questions on that? Okay, Aaron, you there for the raffle winners? Yes, sir. All right, who we got? We got Montreal Simmons and Mike Hernandez. Okay, congratulations, you two, Montreal and uh, Mike. DDR will get with you on how to, to work all that out. Uh, we'll close so everybody could. Go ahead. Rigged. 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 It was rigged. <laughs> Boo. Boo. I think Pat rigged. owes me $25. Rigged. <laughs> Uh, again, Mark and uh, Rodney, appreciate you guys spending time with us tonight. Great discussion. I uh, hope everybody go. We want to get out of here before the last dance. I know everybody wants to go watch it. So um, everybody stay safe. Again, appreciate you jumping on, trying to, trying to get better and at your craft. And again, thanks to, uh, to our two guests for, for helping us out this evening. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. It was excellent, as always. Thank you guys for participating. Thank you. Great. We learn, as we, we learn as we teach. So it's great. Be safe, everybody. God bless. Everybody. Absolutely. Everyone take care. Thank you. Thank you.